The Trump administration wants to loosen some hunting restrictions on federal land in Alaska. Some hunters may be happy, but many think the changes are not fair game. CNN's Dan Simon has a story. If you're a big game hunter, there may be no better spot than Alaska. Bears, wolves, and caribou among the many majestic animals that are part of the state's natural habitat. Three years ago, the Obama administration made hunting them more difficult on federal land. But under President Trump and his Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, an avid hunter himself, a striking reversal. The National Park Service issuing a notice that it wants to roll back regulations for sport hunting in Alaska's national preserves. Trophy hunting could get a lot easier. And that has conservation groups outraged. Trump has just been pushing time and time again to open up additional opportunities to kill big game like wolves, bears here in the United States and abroad. Among the changes, bait hunting would be okay again. Foods like bacon and donuts previously outlawed would be fair game to lure and shoot brown bears. Wolves and their pups could also be killed in their dens, while motorboats could be used to shoot swimming caribou. High-powered lights would also be okay to allow hunters to better see their prey. Critics like Colette Adkins note that President Trump's sons are avid trophy hunters and believe it may have been a factor in the decision killing mother bears and their cubs near dens using artificial lights. That's not sporting. That's not fair chase. That's really blood sport. But in Alaska, where big game hunting is embedded in the state's culture, state wildlife officials are pleased with the decision because the federal rules would become more consistent with state rules. Rural communities in particular don't want to be told by the feds how to do their hunting. As for using donuts and bacon as bait, it is a method of taking bears that is legal in Alaska and in fact is legal in, in, in many states. And it's generally done in very rural places. It is a legal method of taking of bears. In a statement, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game says the state's goal as primary wildlife manager on all lands within its borders will be to continue maintaining healthy and sustainable wildlife populations, both predators and prey. The rollback, though, won't happen immediately. The public will have 60 days to provide comments. But assuming nothing changes, animal rights groups say they will challenge the decision in court. Dan Simon, CNN, San Francisco. All right, Dan, thank you very much. When we come back, Jeff Corwin joins me. I'm going to ask him what he thinks about the Trump administration rolling back protections for wildlife. The Trump administration wants to end an Obama-era ban on hunting practices that some people say are cruel. Listen to some of the things they want to allow. Using food like bacon and donuts to lure and shoot bears. Killing wolves and their pups right in their dens. And using high-powered lights so hunters can better see their prey. Is this fair game? Well, let's discuss all of this now with wildlife biologist Jeff Corrin. Jeff, I appreciate you joining us. Good evening to you. How common are these kinds of practices among hunters? Well, Don, we're talking about national preserves, which are managed by the National Park Service. These are the most prestigious, most celebrated landscapes on our planet, especially when it comes to symbols of who we are as a country. So the idea that you would allow uh, techniques of this sort to hunt in landscape and wildlife that belongs to all of us is absolutely absurd and demoralizing and incredibly depressing. So what about the fact that these are, you said, land that belongs to all of us? These are public lands, uh, granted at times very remote, but where other people come to enjoy recreation and wildlife. Should that be a factor here? Well, absolutely. These are the symbols of who we are as a nation. For example, many states allow for hunting and fishing. I'm a hunter and fisherman myself. I love mm -hmm. to connect with the outdoors and natural resources, in addition to my work as a wildlife biologist. And each state, Don, has its own regulations and how it manages wildlife. But federally and nationally, we go through the Department of the Interior and the National Park Service and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that primarily use data and science as the backdrop to putting forth regulations when it comes to connecting with resources. For example, if you're in Yellowstone National Park, you need to fish with a barbless hook. And we're talking about killing pups and bear cubs and, and wolf babies and taking uh, ungulates down from 
boats and rivers. It's incredibly unheard of. But unfortunately, Don, it's really not surprising. There has never been a presidential administration more more uh, willfully uh, uh, intent on, on being ne negligent when it comes to managing our resources than this administration. Look at their stance on climate change denial, the shrinking of national monuments, the absurd border wall through Mexico and the United States and all these protected habitats, the importation of elephant and lion trophies. This is just yeah. one more crack well, I'm, I'm in the talk dam that ultimately... I'll talk to you a little bit more about that, but just to be clear, a lot of, don't a lot of people hunt this way? Do a lot of people hunt this way? Yeah. In what way? To, no. Uh, very rarely have I ever heard of, of states allowing people to spot hunt wildlife. In fact, most states, including my state, Massachusetts, okay. it is illegal to use spotlights to hunt animals. You don't kill the offspring, their future generation of a species okay. survival. So listen, you, and you mentioned it. You talked about uh, the Trump administration. It's not the first time that they have rolled back protections on wildlife and land. They're also allowing imports of trophies derived from big game hunting, which you talk, uh, talked about, on a case-by-case -case basis. Drastically reduced park, parkland surrounding two national monuments in Utah. What do you think the motivation is for rolling back these regulations, Jeff? I, I believe it's a willful and, and, and purposeful negligence when it comes to managing our resources. I think this is what happens when you allow big business to, to secure the director of the EPA, Scott Pruitt, and when you allow the president's son, who is a big game hunter in Africa, to, to, to select the director of the Department of the Interior, Secretary Zinke, this is what you get. And elections have consequences, Don, and the consequences here are devastating when it comes to the future of our natural resources. Again, it's not about accessing resources and using resources. It's about being pragmatic, wise, and sustainable. And I see none of that here. And in the end, Don, I think it's my children that are going to pay the price. We know for a fact that there are species on the brink of extinction. We know for a fact that a species and race of rhino just uh, tipped into the extinction threshold with the passing of the only surviving male. Yet this administration is opening up the importation of trophies from countries that have proven themselves to be unstable when it comes to wildlife management. So unfortunately, it is depressing and it is wonder, shocking, but it kind of goes with the territory. I wonder if, uh, you know, speaking about the sons, you mentioned his sons, eight, uh, Don Jr. and Eric, avid hunters. But the president has at times expressed distaste for their trophy hunting. What impact do you think the publicity over this rule change will have, if any? Donna, I think there's just so much embarrassment of riches on the radar screen that this will just kind of blip and disappear. As with the whole allowing the importation on a case-by-case -case basis when it comes to uh, trophy hunting. And again, for me, it's not about an access to resources or hunting or fishing. It's saying that a country like mm -hmm. Zimbabwe that had a dictator who was served roasted baby elephant on his 90th birthday to say that this country is in a stable place with the checks and balances that we traditionally have in our country when it comes to resource use. I mean, that's preposterous. But this is kind of how this administration plays. We know that President Trump has said in the past, that he found this distasteful and what happened. We were focused on other things, Don, and they came in and they slid this under mm -hmm. the door. And now this is just one more example of, of how our country today is being steered down a path of potentially no return when it comes to the protection of our species. When science doesn't matter, Don, when we deny climate change with regard to a changing planet, this I mean, this is just the frosting in the cake. Yeah. Jeff Korn, we're out of time. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time we had together. Thank you. Thanks, Donna.